Federation of Trade Unions hoped that 120,000 people would march on Red Square on the main streets of uh, the Russian capital to mark May Day. We now cross uh, to Russia where we're joined by our reporter Julia Lyubova who's uh, standing by. Julia, thanks very much indeed. So there was a massive march planned for Red Square, uh, a traditional focal point for May Day celebrations uh, in Russia. What was the turnout like in the end? Well, indeed, it was a very busy 1st of May parade uh, in Moscow today. Up to 120,000 people have turned up uh, to this uh, Labor Day rally, according to its organizers. It was organized by labor unions of uh, Moscow. And this demonstration in Moscow was actually the largest one uh, in Russia. And uh, rallies similar to this took place in 170 Russian uh, cities. The participants uh, at this rally demanded better salaries and conditions for workers. They chanted... Uh, slogans like peace and stability, decent wages and safety for all workers. Many people were carrying Russian flags, balloons, placards with their uh, various slogans and uh, red flowers, the symbol of uh, spring. And of course, this rally is traditional. It comes from the Soviet Union times and uh, uh, as well as this rally, this is also an actually a national holiday for the majority of Russians. And it is a celebration that uh, has uh, strong political overtones. Uh, the ruling party wanting to show its force and often the m marches, particularly in Moscow, don't uh, sort of speak out against the government uh, on such a day. Um, what was it like today? You've talked about uh, better working conditions and so on and so forth in other parts of the country. Uh, what was Moscow like? Was it as robust as other cities? Yes, indeed. So the, rallies, uh, that the rally that was organized in Moscow was organized by uh, Moscow Labor Union. So indeed, government organizations and companies such as the Moscow Metro, various uh, transport organizations, even Moscow taxi drivers, uh, things like uh, big families of Moscow. So indeed, uh, companies and organizations uh, that are related to the government. So indeed, this wasn't an anti-government protest in any way. This was, of course, the workers were demanding uh, better uh, working conditions and better to live in conditions and indeed the mayor of Moscow, uh, Sobyanin, he was actually leading this rally and promised to improve living and working conditions to those people. So this is an opportunity for those uh, government and civil workers to uh, come out uh, in large numbers and demand better conditions uh, for their employment. So indeed it wasn't in any way an anti-government protest, just a, a way for those workers to come out and express uh, and their demands for stability, for better improved conditions and for decent wages. Now, last year, the Human Rights Watch report uh, raised grave concerns about uh, workers being exploited at uh, World Cup venues. Uh, documented cases of workers being left unpaid, uh, made to work in very cold weather. Uh, what's happened in terms of improving conditions of these workers since then, especially with the World Cup literally just uh, a couple of weeks away now? Yes, indeed. So the Human Rights, uh, report, Human Rights Watch report uh, came out last year and that alleged that some workers on the uh, World Cup uh, stadiums, they were paid low wages and uh, had to work in very harsh conditions. And even some 20 workers are said to have died at those World Cup 2018 sites. And even there were reports of forced uh, laborers from North Korea working on some of those sites. Russia denied any abuse uh, uh, in those cases and by now, of course, all the construction on stadiums uh, or those new stadiums is finished and the World Cup gets underway in Russia on 14th of June. And another issue I'm sure that's of concern to uh, Russian workers has been the sanctions that have been uh, sort of tabled by the US. And I wonder what potential retaliatory moves we'll see Russia taking against these uh, new US sanctions. We understand that there's a, a draft law which envisions curbs on the use of US software, imports of US agricultural, alcohol, tobacco products uh, and, and uh, products like that. 
Yes, indeed. In April, the United States sanctioned seven Russian oligarchs and 12 companies that they either own or control. Well, Russia called those sanctions illegal and a form of unfair competition designed to squeeze Russian companies out of global markets. Well, Russia said it will uh, retaliate to those sanctions, but said its response will be in line with Russia's interests. And now Russian lawmakers are mulling uh, those options. Uh, they would, those options will give Kremlin powers to ban or restrict a list of U.S. imports. This could uh, range from uh, software bans to bans on alcohol and uh, medicine from the United States. Well, the State Duma, the lower house of Russian parliament, uh, will begin exam is examining those retaliatory measures. And on 15th of May, they will vote uh, for them in the first reading. So we'll have to wait until 15th of May to find out what those retaliatory measures uh, Moscow is willing to take. You've mentioned uh, wages, and this is a, a, a battle cry for workers around the world, and uh, it'll never be enough. But what are the, the challenges that uh, the average Russian worker is kind of dealing with on a daily basis? You know, what, what do they mostly complain about uh, uh, day to day? Well, indeed, as was uh, clear from uh, the uh, rally earlier today in Moscow, many people are calling for stability and for decent wages because uh, quite a lot of people in Russia, millions of them actually, in line with their recent uh, Western sanctions and with the low oil prices, have found themselves living below poverty line in Russia. And indeed, many people are calling for higher salaries. They, they believe that their labor is worth a lot more than what they are getting paid for. Again, pensions is also another issue. Uh, issue in Russia for Russian workers and uh, now there's a debate about uh, pension age and so indeed uh, Russian uh, workers are uh, calling for stability to be paid on time to be paid a decent salary and to be provided a decent uh, conditions for the employment such as health and safety at work so that uh, the sort of the salary the um, the stability of it that is the, that is some of the main issues that uh, Russian workers are dealing with and uh, one other thing that uh, is of concern to Russians, I believe, in St. Petersburg, they were marching against the uh, Russian government ban on the popular messaging app Telegram. What's all that about? What's, what's the fuss about Telegram and what's the Russian government trying to do? Well, indeed, uh, the Russian government on 16th of April banned this popular messaging service called Telegram. Uh, the Russian services, the Russian watchdog uh, Roskomnadzor said that it's banning this uh, service because uh, it refused to hand uh, keys uh, to uh, the FSB Russian spy services. And indeed, thousands of people came out in St. Petersburg today, but also in Moscow uh, just on Monday, and they were they were calling they were calling against uh, this ban, saying that the government had no rights to restrict internet freedoms like that. So indeed, many people are very annoyed that this service is uh, being banned, even though it is still possible to use the telegram uh, in some ways but uh, also this caused some disruptions on uh, on the internet use for other websites such as Google and Amazon for example so indeed uh, this uh, many people are very annoyed uh, at the government banning this service in Russia all right Julia that's where we can leave it thanks very much indeed and uh, thanks for your insights on this uh, very important day okay so that was uh, our reporter uh, mm. Julia Lu Dubrova in yes. uh, Moscow. And, and I know it's a serious issue and a serious yeah. day, but beautiful visuals out of Moscow, of yeah. St. Basil's Cathedral and the Kremlin, the official yeah. residence of the president. Yeah, it is. And, it, you know, um, it, interestingly, um, mm. Labor Day is celebrated in September in the U.S. and mm. Canada as well. Mm. So they don't do it in May. Mm. And the thing about the U.S. is that they didn't want to do it in May because of its communist background. Mm. And, of course, mm. that takes us uh, to Russia. To steer clear so, it. yeah, it's yes. an interesting one. So, so in America, they're not having uh, uh, Labor Day today. Theirs is only much later mm. in September.